Hi, I'm John Meadows. Hi, I'm Paul Carter. And we're here in Sydney, Australia at the Clean Health Performance Center. And we're here to build the beast. cover everything hands-on so you'll understand how to apply all these ideas. Uh, you're also going to see some exercises that might not be so common, they're a little unique. You're going to understand uh, what the ideologies are. You know, how can I grow muscle the absolute fastest and not waste my time? And also, you're going to see it in motion. You're going to see the application of these ideas, the high-intensity techniques, all that fun stuff. And that's what we're going to that's what we're going to cover. I will be covering how to get strong, how to perform the power lifts, the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. Uh, technically correct, uh, functionally correct. How to fix your problem areas, how to fix your weaknesses, how to do all these things in order to make you better, stronger from top to bottom. And looking forward to being here and looking forward to getting this done. All right, I'm here with Marnie Rosen. Marnie is a national champion and figure here in Australia and we're going to talk about a couple different back movements that you may or may not have seen before. Uh, if you're looking for a nice V taper, most people are, uh, you obviously want to develop your lats, the muscles in your back. So we're going to show you a couple different ways to do that. This first exercise, um, I'm going to take credit and say I invented it. I popularized this, it's called a Meadows Row and it's, you can also do this on a T-bar machine. Here we have a landmine set up and this is what Marnie's going to do. Okay. Typically when you do this, you want to want to use straps around your wrist so your, form, so your grip doesn't give out. But this is essentially what we're going to do. We're going to grab the bar and we're going to row it. Now as Marnie's going to do this, I'm going to take you through her form and kind of what we're looking for and how to perfect this exercise. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to look at this hip right here because it's perfect. It's actually set up a little higher than the other hip. The, the side that you're executing the row on, you want that hip up a little bit. The reason why is watch this. It's going to pre-stretch your lower lat, okay? Now, watch your elbows now. Okay, right now, her elbows are coming up kind of high, so she's getting a lot of rhomboid and upper lat activation. Now, watch this. She's going to step up with her feet. Just step up a little. The other leg up. Okay, now keep rowing. Now, she's getting kind of in the belly of her lat. Just by moving her feet forward and backward, she can change the stress of the part of her back she wants to hit. So if she wants to hit more rhomboids and upper lats, she's going to have her feet back a little. If she wants to hit the belly of her lat, she's going to stand up a little. And if you watch your elbows, they look really good. Now the other thing you can do, you can stretch at the bottom really well with this exercise. Look at this stretch right here, it's excellent. Now watch this, watch this stress. Okay, now the other thing is this hand that's not actually doing the movement should be re resting so she has balance. We don't want her sitting here thinking about how am I going to stay balanced. So use that other hand to balance yourself while you're rowing, okay? There you go, that's the Meadows row. All right, now the next exercise we're going to do is a one-arm barbell row. Most people are familiar with a barbell row, they use with both hands. This is actually more difficult on your lats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand beside the bar and we're simply gonna row it. It's almost like a dumbbell row. So our model is going to execute this movement and we're going to, there's a couple key things we're gonna look for here. Okay, first of all, you're gonna watch your elbows. She's getting a really good range of motion. Her elbows are coming up high. She's getting a great lat contraction. Now, let's say she wanted to change the stress on her back. 
All she has to do is move her feet, and again, you can apply more stress to upper lats, lower lats. So she's gonna step up a little bit this time. Now, I want you to watch her form now. Watch as she does it. Now, compare that to the last, the last couple reps she did. Now she's getting more lower lats because her foot position has changed. It's all about the elbow. You can't think, I'm pulling with my arm. What you have to think is I'm driving with my elbow. So upper lats, lower lats, it's all about your elbow. That's the key to lat development. Also, if you notice, she had her other arm resting. She's not doing a balanced exercise. And here's the final key point. The, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they row is they get into this kind of this rotation like this. Keep your shoulders square and flat. So don't twist, just stay in position. Pull with your lats. And what, and this, she's gonna do a couple more reps and now she's gonna really reach and stretch. Also watch how her shoulders are staying square and she's not rotating, okay? So we're gonna do a couple more reps. See the stretch? See how she's staying square, she's not twisting? That's perfect, that's exactly how you do this. All right, now we're gonna take just a normal dumbbell row and we're gonna make it a little bit more of an explosive movement, okay? The key to this is your elbows again. Elbows, elbows, elbows. We're gonna drive our elbows up hard. This weight isn't real heavy, but you gotta realize most of you out there will be using a little bit more weight. So again, it's just a normal dumbbell row. We call these dead stop dumbbell rows, okay? So drive your elbow, hard, rest. Hard, rest. And when you do that with a heavier dumbbell, it's a very, very difficult movement. It requires a lot of energy. Training your lats more explosively as opposed to kind of in a rhythm. It's a, just a different way of hitting lat fibers. I'm gonna drive it up a little bit harder. Stretch. Now, you wanna pause at the bottom, pause. Let, let it sit down. You actually let it sit down and then boom, drive up hard. There, that's what you want right there. There you go, dead stop dumbbell row. Okay, now we're gonna take a simple dumbbell pullover. I just want you to experiment with this technique when you're doing it. Most people lay across the bench. Notice now we're laying on the bench and not really across it, okay? So it's a dumbbell pullover. What you're going to do is get a little bit of bend in your elbows and then lock your arms. All the pull is going to be done with your lats and your serratus. So she's going to lower the dumbbell slowly. Now when you come back up, you're only going to bring it to right above your forehead because we want to keep tension on your lats. If she continues to go up here, she's going to lose tension on her lats and she's going to start shifting tension to her pecs, okay? So she's going to come down, back up to the top of her head. Now, don't force the stretch at the bottom. Every time you do a rep, a set, you'll get more flexible, you'll get looser, so don't force it, okay? Each time you do a set, you'll feel a better range of motion. This is very simple, but it's very effective for your lats. Now we're gonna do a T-bar row. Actually, it's a T-bar deadlift. But looking at this, normally you would think, wow, that's a great spinal erector exercise, or maybe you're thinking glutes and hams. She's actually gonna be working her lower lats. Um, notice a couple things here. We have plates that we're standing on, number one. This is to give you a little bit more range of motion. Number two, notice she has a small plate right here. You're gonna to wanna to use smaller plates. If it was a bigger plate, she'd be standing up too high, she wouldn't have a range of motion. So we're elevating her feet, we're using small plates. Now what's the, ex what's the execution of this T-bar deadlift? Watch what she's doing. Okay, when she's coming up, I want her to pull her elbows back a little and flex right here, okay? All the tension is right here. You can feel her lower lats flexing really tight right now. The main thing is mind-muscle connection on this. Think lower lats, lower lats. Hey, it's Paul Carter. We're going to talk about squatting right now. Uh, I'm with James Kant, uh, IFBB physique competitor, and uh, we're going to go over some technical fundamentals about squatting and break down all the necessary components to make sure that you're squatting fundamentally, technically correct. The first thing I want to talk about is breathing and stabilizing your trunk. Um, a lot of people, whether they wear a belt or don't wear a belt, don't understand the concept of protecting your lumbar spine. The one thing we don't want to do 
people often turn to the side here for me. They they really fear spinal flexion. So you see people get bent over like this. Relax here. So you'll see this, and this is bad. Turn to the side here, James. I want you to show this. So you'll see people get bent over in their squatting. So you get spinal flexion, and this puts your disc at risk uh, for bulging disc. And that sort of thing. This puts your, your spine in a precarious position. I want you to actually bend here like, yeah, this right here. So you see you get this, the spine gets rounded here. This is bad. But a lot of people don't understand that spinal extension is bad too, right? So when people arch here, this puts a lot of unnecessary torque on the spine as well. So what we want is for this, all of this through here, and all this back through here, to be very rigid and tight. And I'll show when you have, a lot of people say arch your back when you're squatting. Well, I'll show one of the reasons why when you, when you uh, have lordosis when you squat, which means uh, an exaggeration of uh, spinal extension, that what happens is, so arch hard, James, you see how soft this is? See how soft that is? Okay. That means there's no way that your trunk can be stabilized, okay? Because if you arch very hard, stretches the abdominals, and they're very soft. So you're not providing protection for your lumbar spine. So what I, I like to do is I like to make sure to apply a lot of force down through the obliques that stabilizes everything through here. So when this happens, what happens is the rib cage comes down. So James, basically a lot of times what I, I tell people to do, the cue, because it can be hard for some people to understand how to feel this, is the same motion that you would make when you're trying to go to the bathroom really hard. So, watch what happens though, so make that motion. There it is, right there. It happens every time, because people knows what that, well, no, they know what that feels like. So make that motion. Now, you feel when, when James makes that motion, he still has a neutral spine. He's not arched, so arch, go ahead and arch. Arch, no, arch, arch, he's not arched, and he's, he doesn't have spinal flexion either, okay? But if I ask him to make that motion again, make that motion, James. Yeah, now he has a neutral spine, but he's now he's very, very solid through here. And that's what we want. That's how we're gonna protect the lumbar spine when we're squatting. The next thing we wanna go over is tying in this part with this part. So go ahead and grab the bar. What I wanna talk about is scapular retraction. Now, a lot of people have trouble getting scapular retraction. They aren't positive what that's supposed to look like. And sometimes you'll see people just say, well, pull your shoulders back. So, James, go ahead and pull your shoulders back. But this isn't exactly correct. What I like to tell people is, the mental cue for it is to take your shoulder blades and put your shoulder blades into your back pocket. Put them into your back pocket. So we want back and down, right here. Yes, that's better. So relax now. Now relax, now do it again. Shoulder blades. Down in your back pocket, back and down. So remember, we don't want this. Remember what the motion is here, so give me that. There we go, that's what I want. Now, we have stability throughout the shoulders and stability throughout the trunk and the core. So that's exactly where the upper body needs to be when we're gonna squat with some heavy weight. So let's start by showing low bar stuff. So go ahead and get in, James. So get your hip under the bar. Remember, scapular retraction, shoulder blades down and back. Okay, now pop the bar off. Walk out one, two. Now another, the one thing a lot of people do on the walkout is that they will take two, three, four steps out. You wanna limit that because when the weights do get heavy, you want to spend as little energy as possible getting the bar off the racks into position. So James will pretend like we got like 700 pounds on here. So hips under the bar. Now the first, one of the things you're gonna do here before you even unrack the bar, deep breath, and stabilize through here. So you're gonna start all these motions right away. Okay, shoulders down and back. Now pop the bar off. One, two steps back. One, two, all right. Now get your feet a little wider, James. A little wider, wide, a little wider. Okay, now make sure that you got this going on here. You got trunk stability, like I talked about. Low bar, this is, James is actually a little more in what I call like mid bar position. So I want to bring this down right here. Now this is why you got to have things down and back. The other thing that we're tying in is that you'll notice his elbows are in a really good position. And what I mean by that is his lats are nice and tight. 
when you get, when you lose this and you get like this, what happens is the lats soften up. So once again, you don't have stability throughout the shoulder joint and you'll lose some stability throughout the trunk. So the shoulders, if you have proper scapular retraction down and back, this also pulls the lats in. So the lats are tight. So now we're tight through the scaps, we're tight through the lats, we're tight through the trunk. Those are, those are all the three things that we need going on in the upper body to make sure that we have full stability. From here, let's keep this simple. We're just gonna break at the hips. So we're not breaking at the knees yet. We're gonna break first at the hips. Yep, go ahead, James. Break, and then squat down, knees out. Yep, hold there, now drive up. Beautiful, and that's it. And that is exactly what a low bar squat's supposed to look like. So we'll show a couple more. So the first break, yep, right there at the hips, down. Knees out, and up, drive, and that's it. Rack the bar. Okay, now we're gonna go into talking about the deadlift. The first thing that we need to decide is what your stance is gonna be, what the width of your stance is gonna be for your feet. A little cue that I like to use for guys is, James, I want you to look up to the ceiling, okay? Now I want you to get into position, find a spot on the ceiling that you wanna jump up and touch. Now get in position to do that. Okay, right there. Naturally, okay, now stop. Naturally, uh-uh, get back in that position. <laughs> right there, where his feet are at, that is about, give or take, where he's gonna feel the most explosive and the most powerful naturally. So you see this, this stance here, James? Yep. That's basically give or take shoulder width, somewhere around that stance. So that's about where he's gonna wanna be when he goes to do his deadlift. So now, walk up to the bar. So we want to have some mental cues that we can refer back to so we get into the same position over and over again when we deadlift. The good one to start with, and this is going to vary depending on the length of someone's femurs and their overall structure. But a good one to start with is to simply cut your feet in half with the bar. So when you walk up to the bar and you look down, you want to take the bar and cut it in half. And this is a good place to start. The next step is to simply Keep your hips straight, your knees straight, your knees locked out, and reach over and grab the bar from there. Now, drop your hips, drop your hips right there. Uh -uh, nope, nope, not that low. What we wanna make sure, there's a couple of things. Go into the position that you were in all the way down. Now I wanna show something here. You, as you can see in this position, this is wrong. James's knees are way over the bar, his hips are super low, his shoulders are behind the bar. There is no way that you can have mechanical leverage over the bar in this position. Now, the deadlift is actually two movements. It is a push off the floor and then a pull over the knees. And I'll show you real quick why James doesn't have any mechanical leverage over the bar this way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Okay. Now what I want to do is put James in a strong leverage position using just a couple of cues. So grab the bar again, roll it in close to you. Now, I want to keep James' shoulders over the bar. I want to keep his hips high. Now drive up. Now James is in a strong leverage position. Put the bar back now. So, grab the bar again. You want to drop the hips enough, but up a little more, where the shoulders remain over the bar and now he's in absolute perfect position. Now what I want you to do is drive off, off the floor with your legs. Now the mental cue I want you to use is try to push the floor away from you with your feet. Right? There we go. And then the last step is simply pulling the bar over the knees. So put it back down. Okay. So there you go. Still in a good position. Hips high enough. Shoulder over the bar. Now push the floor away from you with your feet. And then pull the bar over your knees. There you go. Perfect. The other thing you'll see a lot of people do is once they get the bar in here, they'll do this thing where they do this super lean back. No real need to do that. Once you're locked out, you're locked out. You don't have to end up having scapular retraction or don't bend at the knees once you get locked out. So a lot of people do this, drop the bend at the knees a little bit. You don't want to do this here. Go down, put the bar right down. The other thing I want to go over is making sure that you're getting full gluteal contraction so that once the bar does come over your knees, you can finish with a strong lockout. Now, James has done what a lot of people do, and that he has his toes coming straight ahead, like this. 
okay? Now I'll show you a little thing here as to why the fish will make your lockout suffer and make it harder for you to finish the top part of the pull. James, I want you to contract your glutes as hard as possible. Now I want you to turn your toes out just a little bit and now contract as hard as possible. Are they stronger that way? Yeah. You can't have full gluteal contraction unless you have some external hip rotation. So in order to have some external hip rotation, you have to point your toes outward just a little bit. That's what external hip rotation is. So move your feet in just a little, just a little bit. Okay, now I want to repeat the same process. Now you have external hip rotation. So grab the bar. Remember, don't drop your hips too low. Shoulders over the bar. There you go, right there. Drive through the floor, finish, lock out. There you go. That's it. Form two more. Pull. Yep. One more. Good. And those are your basics about deadlift. Okay, two more cues I want to go over real quick. One is how to lock in the lats to get lat activation. This is a little more advanced, um, so it's not something people have to worry about initially, but it is something that you're going to want to figure out later on. So, James, grab the bar. So, drop your hips. Now, what I want you to do is basically drop your shoulders back towards you. Yes, you see that? So you'll see his lats kick in right here. Now they're tight. Now, um, now relax again. And you'll see what happens here. The more tension that he can have throughout his body, the stronger he's gonna be. So when you get lag contraction, drop your shoulders back again, right here. This is what you want. So this also puts you again in a stable position. So now pull. Now the other thing I wanna correct is, cause you'll see this a lot, bend at the arm. You'll see people bend like this. This is very, very, very bad. Um, this is a great way to end up tearing your bicep tendon. You wanna make sure that you keep your arms long. The longer you are, the shorter the distance that you're gonna have to pull, which means the more weight you're gonna be able to move from point A to point B. So don't bend at the arms. A good way to think about this is James already got it going on. If you, if you find that you have a bad habit of bending at the arms, put the weight down. What you wanna do is, when you grab the bar, flex your triceps, yep. So now flex your triceps, lock in those lats like I talked about, there we go. Now pull, and keep that position. There we go, now you see how much longer the pull is? This is much better than having the lats uh, uncontracted and bending at the arm. A much better stroke on your deadlift this way, allow you to pull more weight and put you in a safer position. All right, now we're gonna talk about rear delts, your posterior deltoids back here. This is, uh, it's actually a very easy muscle to develop, it's just most people don't train it. So I'm gonna show you a couple very, very simple ways you can uh, change your form on a rear dumbbell lateral raise. You probably already do these every once in a while, but we're gonna do a couple things here that'll really put stress on your rear delt and kind of take it out of your traps and your mid back. This is where a lot of people, they kind of lose the stress on the rear delts. So first we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start, we're gonna do a couple reps. Now the first thing I want you to do is I want you to hang your arms, just hang them, okay? I don't want your arms bent and flexed, okay? She's just hanging them. Now, she's gonna do what I call a swing. So she's gonna swing the, delt, rear, the dumbbells up. <clears throat> now I want you to watch your rear delt right here. Watch it work, just keep going, just keep swinging. Notice she's not shrugging with her traps. She's not pulling with her mid back. She's just letting her arms hang and she's literally swinging and flexing. Now, once you get tired, these muscles tend to take over. So all you have to do to keep stress on your rear deltoid it's just shorten the range of motion. So instead of coming all the way up, she can just come right to here. Bring them all the way down. Right there. So that's how you, that's how you can extend the set and keep tension where it's supposed to be. Okay. Now we're gonna do a simple dumbbell slide lateral for the medial head of your deltoid. Obviously, if you develop this, it helps enhance that nice V taper. So the important thing is, I want you to watch where the dumbbell's at, okay? So she's gonna do a couple reps here. Watch where the dumbbell's at. Watch if it's going this way or this way. Just watch where the dumbbell's going, both arms. This is how you keep tension on the right spot on your shoulder. What I see a lot of times is people start coming up like this and they turn it into kind of this hybrid front side delt exercise. She's actually got this down perfect. She's coming straight out to the side and she's using the lateral head of her delts. When you're doing this exercise, just think, 
keep my arms straight out to the side. Keep my arms straight out to the side. Just, just go over that over and over in your head until you get this down. We're gonna do a movement that I call six ways. And this is going to target your front and side delt in the, in the same exercise. So she's gonna start off with a, a side lateral raise up. Now she's gonna bring the dumbbells out in front of her, touch them together, bring them up, right here, lower them, stop, back out to the side, and down. So as she's coming up, she's targeting their, her medial head, the side of her deltoid. When she's bringing them together, she's shifting stress to the front part of her shoulder. And when she's bringing them up, this is, you have to use very light weight when you do this. It's a very difficult exercise. But when she shifts out to the front, she's basically just moving tension out to the front of her shoulder. Okay, let's do one more. Up. Out in front. Up. Down. Make sure you control the weight. Make sure you're not jerky, nice, smooth movements. It's called six ways because you go one, two, three, four, five, six. Great developer for side and front delts. Now we're gonna go over every bro's favorite exercise of bench press. I wanna go over some fundamental aspects of benching. Uh, the first one that I wanna go over uh, is making sure that your shoulders are protected when you bench press. Bench press is obviously well known for tearing people's shoulders up, tearing pecs, those kind of things. This can happen when you do not put yourself in a secure position, keep your shoulders protected. Shoulder blades in your back pocket, back and down. It's also gonna lift your chest. It's gonna decrease the range of motion that we're gonna have. Obviously, we're trying to press more weight. We don't wanna press it farther. So, proper scap retraction. And we actually are gonna arch the back here. This is gonna give us a little arch. Again, reducing the range of motion that we're gonna end up pressing. The second thing that I wanna go over is I wanna go over wrist to elbow position. When you see a lot of people bench press, they get like this. This is this keeps the shoulder puts the shoulder in a really precarious position for injury. Go ahead and get proper scap retraction. Okay. So now that even more, bring them back, bring them back, squeeze hard. So you want to squeeze the shoulders down and into the bench. Yeah, this is better. So what you want to make sure is that the wrist is in line with the elbow and that you don't want too much here that opens up the shoulder joint. And you don't want the elbow too far in because this bit turns it into mostly a tricep exercise. So what you really want is kind of something in between. And you want to have to make sure the wrist is in line with the elbow. And that this is going to travel through here to keep the shoulder protected. And then you're going to press here. And those are the main parts. Now, setting up for the bench requires a lot of tension throughout the body. What a lot of people don't understand is that the bench press is more of a whole body movement because the start of the tension is actually going to come from the feet, driving through the legs, up through the inner body, into the arms, which are obviously doing the pressing part. So what I want to do here, when you lay down on the bench, the first thing that you want to do is find your cue points to get set for. What I always have people do is get their eyes in line with the bar. This is where you're gonna start. The reason why this is is because the bar is the only stationary thing. This is in solid position in the racks, unless you have one of these and it moves, but we're gonna leave it alone. Go ahead and grab the bar, James. Now the next thing that I want James to do, walk your feet back. Okay, walk them back real far until you get a lot of tension on the quads. There you go, more and more. You want your quads to be very tight. Now you automatically see what's happened. You shifted this way. This is okay. You automatically shifted like about an inch or so down the bench when you did that. Walk your feet a little more and you'll see you shift even a little more. You see your body starting to move this way? Good, this is good. Now, what you wanna do from here is drive, keep your feet in place and then drive your body up the bench with your feet, aha, exactly. You feel that motion? Drive your body up the bench until you get your eyes back in line with the bar. Now get proper scapular retraction. Your legs are very tight, aren't they? Yeah. All right, I want you to keep, make sure you keep scap proper scap retraction back there because you want to keep your shoulders protected. Now from here, unrack the bar. You're very tight, right? Now bring the bar over 
over and over. Right? Okay, lower the bar to your lower chest, lower chest. Make sure your wrists are in line with your elbows. Good, now press from there. Good, now we want to add something in. That motion that you were using when you're driving your body up the bench, lower the bar and pause it, lower it to your lower chest. Now, that same motion, but explosive as you push the bar with your legs. So lower it down, okay? Now drive with your legs. Right. So what we really want to see is, we want to see an explosive movement, like a leg extension. So use like a leg extension to drive your body up the bench. There you go. Now that's what I want to see when you drive with your legs through the bar. I want it to be very explosive and very hard. So you can relax for a minute. There's, there's a lot of tension. So when you, as you can see, James, were you in a lot of discomfort? Okay, a lot. When you get set up tight enough in a bench press, it's a very uncomfortable position. Your legs are gonna be tense, your lower back's gonna be tense, your shoulders are gonna be tense. There's, you have to create a lot of tension throughout the body in order to be in a very strong position to press with a lot of power. If you have any part of your body that's lax, you're not gonna generate as much power into the bar. So once again, Get your eyes in line with the bar. Now get your scapular retraction. Okay, walk your feet back like we talked about. Walk them back, walk them back, walk them back. A lot of tension there. Keep walking them back until you can feel your body moving this way down the bench. Keep going. All right, now drive up the bench a little bit so you get in position. There you go. Now lift the bar off. Bring it far out over you, far out. Okay, lower the bar. Do the lower part of your chest. Now drive with your legs. There we go, nice, good. One of the questions that you'll often get is, should I bench press in a straight line from point A to point B, or should I bench press from here and then let the bar travel backwards? Which way did the bar travel on you? Uh, backwards. backwards, right. If you let the bar travel from point A to point B, then some people say this is the shortest distance, and technically that's true. But what happens is when you press from here, the prime mover is basically the pectoral. Once you get to this lockout position, when the bar passes through the uh, transitional point in the rep, what has to finish is mostly tricep. When you allow the bar to travel here and then come backwards a little bit, you actually bring the shoulders into play so that the shoulders help in locking out the weight. When you go from here to here, they don't get to play as much of a part in executing that. But when you come from here to here, and then allow that slightly backwards range, the shoulders actually kick in, play a bigger role in helping you with the lockout. And this will, is also uh, a way to make sure that your lockout is stronger. So uh, you, ha you may have to play with that. Some people do feel a little better just pressing point A to point B, but if you can perfect that J curve, then actually you'll be able to press more because you'll bring the shoulders into play and not making your tricep uh, the main emphasis of locking out the weight at the end. One of the key things that you'll notice throughout all of the movements that we go over is tension. The more tension that you can create, the stronger you're gonna be, the better position your body's gonna be in. The less tension you have, the less weight you're gonna be able to move, the less force you're gonna be able to generate. Tension is very key in everything that you do, especially when you're talking about moving big weights. So one of the things I wanna demonstrate on James, and I haven't done this to him before, is that I'm gonna relax my whole body and I'm gonna shake his hand, put your hand out, give me a firm handshake. Now I'm gonna squeeze his hand as hard as I can, but I'm gonna keep my body relaxed, okay? So whole body relaxed, I'm gonna shake his hand and I'm gonna squeeze as hard as I can. Not too bad? Yeah. Okay. Now I am gonna create a lot of tension throughout my body by squeezing my glutes, okay? Actually getting scapular traction, creating this force that we talked about earlier. And I'm putting my body in a strong position with a lot of tension. And now I'm gonna shake James' hand and I'm gonna squeeze. Was there a lot more tension there? A lot more, right? Did I make myself stronger? Yeah. Absolutely. Just by increasing the amount of tension that I have in my body when I perform the motion. So the more tension that you have, the stronger you're gonna be, the more powerful you're gonna be, the more muscle you'll have, uh, the safer that you'll be, the better posture you'll be in. Tension is key in creating power and being strong. That is one of the things that I wanna go over. All right, now we're gonna do an exercise for your transverse abdominis. This is a corset-shaped muscle that actually, when developed, can kind of help you suck your stomach in. This is good for those, those of you who wanna keep a nice, flat, tight waist. And 
Hicks. What Marnie's gonna do is, as she lets the bar pull her up and stretch her, she's sucking in her stomach as hard as she can. Now, what she's gonna do is she's gonna blow her air out and flex her abs, and that's how the bar comes down. So she's flexing her abs. Now watch when she stretches. She's coming up to stretch. She's pulling back in. You can see her stomach pulling in, sucking in. Okay, blow your air out. If you haven't done these before, they'll feel very uncomfortable at first, right, on, right around this area, just because those muscles aren't used to working this hard. But again, when you learn how to contract these muscles and you develop them, they keep your stomach tucked in really, really nice. We just call these pull down crunches is what we call them. So she's sucking in, now she's blowing her air out and she's flexing. That's it. All right, now we're gonna do an exercise called spider crawls. These are actually good to strengthen your rotator cuff. You can actually feel these in your rear delta even. It's a very good exercise. If you have a bat, if your shoulders are kind of achy, your rotator cuff is a little beat up. It's also a very good rehabilitative exercise. So Marna's got a short band and what she's doing is she's trying to horizontally, horizontally ad, abduct her shoulders. So she's pulling her hands out. Now watch, she's just going up and down the wall. Now you don't want to get too close to the wall or your elbows will bend too much. You want to kind of stand away from the wall. Now see how she's just going up and down. She's also trying to pull her hands apart and that's key. Pull your hands apart as you're doing this exercise. And if you can go up and down three times, that's, it'll burn, you'll feel it really well. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is just show you a couple things that you can uh, do on a standard leg extension to affect the different parts of the area uh, that you wanna work. The first thing we wanna do is we're gonna try to get into his upper thigh, his rectus femoris area. And what James is gonna do is he's doing a leg extension. He's actually gonna pull his toes back. He's gonna actually dorsiflex his foot back toward him. So James, go ahead and knock out some reps. He's actually pulling his toes back. The harder he pu pulls his toes back, the more this muscle is gonna activate. Okay, so that's how you get, that's how you can get extra stress applied to your uh, upper thigh. Now, okay, James, you can stop for a second. Now, many people have problems with development of the muscle around their knee, their vastus medialis. James is gonna do the same movement, but now he's gonna push his toes down. So James, continue to set, but now plantar flex your foot. Push your toe down. Now we've applied a lot of pressure to this area of the squad. Nice and slow, there you go. Right there. Okay. So that's just a very simple twist to this exercise, depending on what part of your leg that needs the most work.